but there are people who are just starting or people who are younger or people who are you know maybe in their 20s 30s and have are just curious on what a hostel is like right and Mm -hmm. i'm a big believer like if you're curious you should try it once and if you don't like it you don't have to do it ever again (laughs) i'm trizzy and i'm leah and this is ticket to anywhere podcast bringing you the gear tools and tips to equip you for a travel filled life no matter your travel experience or lack thereof we aim to be your first stop when you're thinking of where to go how to get there what to bring and what to do catch the latest episode every other wednesday on youtube or your favorite listening app we'd love to connect with you Find Ticket to Anywhere on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. Welcome back to another episode of the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Trizzy at Triz Inc. And I'm Leah, LA in flight. And did you all know we have a new website? (laughs) Ooh, yeah. It's called, it's called, we're so proud of it. Honestly, this has been a few years in the making and we're just proud that we have one place that we can direct all of you, whether you're a listener or you've been watching us on YouTube for a long time, but now you can do everything in one spot. It's called ticket to anywhere.com. We made it simple for you. It's the name of us, <laughs> the name of our <laughs> podcast, the name of the brand, but on ticket to anywhere.com, you'll be able to listen to the episodes. You'll be able to watch the episodes. You'll be able to sign up for our newsletter called the check-in. Mm-hmm which we drop the first Wednesday of every month, right? You'll be able to find out about our upcoming IRL events where we meet up around Los Angeles or around the world, you know, for future global meetups. And it's, you can contact us through there. Also, if you have guest recommendations or if you want to apply to be a guest, you want to drop us a note on anything, we are just excited that this is up and running. So check it out, tickettoanywhere.com. And Leah and I did not discuss what we're wearing today. We just magically yes. happened to be wearing maroon tops. I love it. Yeah, we definitely don't like say, are we going to twin today? Yeah, right. <laughs> On today's episode. So a lot of you may have made a New Year's resolution <laughs> to solo travel for the first time mm-hmm. or maybe stay in a hostel and meet new people for the first time. And since it is April, May, we're going to make sure you make good on that resolution that you made four or five months ago. And we've crafted an entire episode on, okay, you've booked your first hostel, now what, right? Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to kind of talk about the booking process, what to look for in hostels, what hostels are like nowadays. They're so different. Very um, different. Yeah, they're very, very different. Trizzy knows. Trizzy would never yeah. stay in a hostel, and she actually stayed in one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's modern, and it's not mm-hmm. a murder scene, guys. It's not. <laughs> it's not like that. We're decades past that. And this is coming, you know, this is coming from someone I've seen a bit of the evolution over the past, what, maybe 15 years of staying in hostels. And even then, 15 years ago, I thought these are so cool. And now I look at them nowadays, I'm like, they're unrecognizable compared to what they wow. were 15 years ago, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would just- say you're the perfect person to be talking about this because you've stayed in hostels literally all over the world yeah. from South America to Asia to Europe. Never. So in and the U.S. America. In yeah. the U.S. I have an amazing piece of content that I posted on Instagram that talks about hostel culture in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And it's growing, you know, it hasn't been prominent, but now it is, which is kind of cool. Just people are looking to hostels for different things. They're looking for convenience. They're looking for community. They're looking for ease of use. And they're looking for maybe traveling longer on a bit of a budget. Where can they stretch their dollar? Usually at a hostel, Mm -hmm. right? So this might be an episode to convince you to try to stay in one, or it just might be an episode, an informational episode on what they're like these days because they have um, evolved into the coolest spaces. I'm a big fan of them. Yeah. Yeah. So share this episode with a friend who is thinking about staying at a hostel or keep it to yourself. Do what you got to (laughs) do. Yeah. And save it down if you need to reference it. We drop a lot of good tips on safety, what to bring, where to look for 
hostels, um, what to look for at them. So Mm -hmm. definitely save this episode down for a later trip, an upcoming trip. Nice. But but you know what they do provide free sometimes in these hostels, which I love? Coffee and tea, of course. (laughs) Love it. It's what I need. Exactly. And today I'm just drinking a little hot brew made with my AeroPress. Uh, P.S. I haven't busted out my AeroPress in a couple of years, so I'm happy to be using it again. It's because I want to get the AeroPress go. So I was like, oh, let me try, you know, practicing, practicing. You don't need to practice with AeroPress. It's so easy to use. But I've been brewing hot coffee with my AeroPress lately. So I have an AeroPress cup right here um, flavored with a teeny bit of like pistachio creamer by like International Delight or something. It's really good. It's a really good way to start my morning. But that is my coffee for today and Trizzy, what tea are you drinking keeping it simple with my lemon water in my hydro flask okay Mm -hmm. i need that little vitamin c kick so yeah definitely usually lemon water all day there you go all right well cheers to that and cheers to you staying in your first hostel soon enough cheers So why would someone ever book a hostel, even in this day and age, right, when we feel like there's a migration back to hotels, long-term rental, short-term rentals are still quite popular, even though they're banned in so many cities. Yeah, hostels these days are just, they're not like the movie. They're not. <laughs> that's what every, but that's what everyone thinks. That's how I see it as. I know. Yeah. And I'm like, first off, that movie came out like 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they're not like the movie. They're so, and I'll get into it, but they're so different nowadays. They're basically like small boutique hotels for people who want to stay in dorms, right? The first hostel, I, ch- I looked at this last night, that I ever stayed at was called Hostel San Remo. In Athens, Greece, it was 2011. I had come off my EF college break. They're now called EF Ultimate Break group tour, three weeks island hopping in Greece. And for this hostel, Hostel San Remo, I paid, I I checked my receipt. I still have my receipt from 2011. It's in my email. Don't worry. I don't have the physical piece of paper. But I paid 84 euros for six nights. And this place is still open. And it's, it, I'm not going to lie, it is older. <laughs> it is different from what I thought it looked like, but it's still got a four-star rating. So I'm okay, like, okay, so them. it's all about the service. Yeah, 100%. Okay. And it's a really good location. There was lots of food around it. Like, it was just bare bones, like, just what you needed, right? Uh, again, why would someone book a hostel? They booked them because they are inexpensive. A lot of budget travelers who are, like, starting to travel, right? They know that hostels are different nowadays. Like, because they give off the vibe. Like, when I say hostels aren't what they used to be like, they're not like the movies. They're not creepy. Now, when hostels present themselves in 2024 to the younger travelers, to, like, a Gen Z, they're all about co-working they're all about being social they're all about comfort they're all about like being vibey and aesthetic right it's not like you know the first inclination isn't like they're cheaper even though they are and people want to meet others whether they're traveling alone or not whether if they're in a group they want to meet people cool hostel usually is the place to go if you're alone you absolutely want to meet people most of the time so they go to a hostel Or people book a hostel because they need a fast place to stay because it's a quick layover or it's close to the airport, right? So convenience. For those that are debating booking, because I still come across this a lot, and we always have to think, you know, Triz, you and I are pretty experienced travelers, but there are people who are just starting or people who are younger or people who are, you know, maybe in their 20s, 30s and have are just curious on what a hostel is like, right? And Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer, like, if you're curious, you should try it once. And if you don't like it, you don't have to do it ever again, (laughs) ever. So with that being said, I always say be sure to check cancellation policies. Some hostels have a 24-hour cancellation policy, which I feel is really generous. Some will flex with you if you've booked for multiple nights. You know, I've had situations where I've booked multiple days at a hostel, but I needed to leave early for one reason or another. And they'll work with me if I just talk to the front desk, you know. And always have a backup plan for those who are debating booking. If you don't like it, you want to check out, 
you know, make sure you know what your next move is or try to plan that out beforehand. But I say go for it. Now, how do you find a good hostel, right? Because people are like, where mm-hmm. do I even start? I mean, in the yeah. in the day and age of like AI and all this information on the internet at our fingertips, it's it's not I, I want to say it's like not hard, but at the same time, it's also very overwhelming. So my favorite sites and resources to like find a good hostel and cross-reference and research, I have quite a few. So I'm going to list them here, and I know you've heard of all of them. Booking.com, Hostel World, Google Reviews, like Google Maps, Hostel Geeks, great publication and media resource, TripAdvisor, of course, Hostel Pass. Agoda, which is better in Asia, I find. Mm-hmm. And then these days, TikTok and YouTube, of course. Long form and short form video content. You get to see what the inside of a dorm room looks like, you know? You get to see what the patios and the gardens look like at these hostels. So a lot of those places I usually research and cross-reference. And then for as far as the booking platform, I pick the one that has the most lenient cancellation. Just because, you know, per our last few episodes, we're like, don't ever book without free cancellation, right? (laughs) But usually that's going direct, especially the last four years. A lot of people are like, we will let you book up until one hour until you need to check in if you book directly with us. I would say like booking directly. Do you think it's nowadays because you did mention AI. Mm -hmm. So let's say you book direct and the website the hostel website is just trying to play you guys with the whole bunch of photos that they grab from AI. So that's where oh my gosh. comes in and Google review comes in, yep. right? And Instagram as well. Instagram Cross-referencing. TikTok. Yeah. I yep. feel like, dude, I feel like Instagram is such a yellow pages these days. And for the, oh, yeah. those that are way younger and not listening, yellow pages is basically like a directory. <laughs> it's like a phone book. I almost feel like, and this is how it used to be back in the day. Like, remember this maybe 10, 15 years ago? If a business didn't have like a website or a Facebook page, I'm like, we'd be like, are they even legit? Right. Mm -hmm. But -hmm. I feel like almost now it's like, okay, do they have an Instagram? Because you could see people's comments. You could see beautiful photos. Like that's the whole point. Instagram started as a photo app. Right. Yeah. So I feel like if they don't have an Instagram, I'm like, are they real? (laughs) If you're just looking for photos, you don't care how many followers like an Instagram has. I was just mm-hmm. like, I just want to verify that they're like an actual business and they're being truthful yeah. about what they look like, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Those are the resources that I use. Um, and a lot of people ask, you know, we kind of covered this a little bit, but what do hostels consist of, right? Where to even start? Because I'm telling you, like I've said already four times, let's take a little sip of coffee every time I say this, but it's not like the movie anymore, yo. <laughs> This is in the late 90s, early 2000s. Like, first and foremost, hostels are built on community. They usually consist of bunk beds, usually with shared bathrooms, like like a true university dorm. But Mm -hmm. these dorms can range anywhere from four people to 30 people. I tend not to stay in those 30 people dorms anymore as I gain more travel experience because I'm also not 19 and I like my space. And (laughs) You have to know how to deal. You have to know and put up with and deal with all these different personalities and different ways of living. If you're in a dorm with 30 people for one night or seven nights, you know, Mm -hmm. how much can you take? But these days, the most, the biggest dorm I'm willing to stay in is like eight people. So me plus seven others. And I pray that it's not fully booked. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) But if you look on any of these hostel sites that I mentioned above, you'll see different price points for different dorm sizes. So, of course, it's cheaper to stay in a 16-person dorm than it is to stay in a four-person dorm. And if you're really traveling on a budget, you can compare. Okay, is saving this – honestly, sometimes the difference is like a dollar and ten cents. It's like, is staying in a dorm of four people versus 16 people worth me saving one dollar and ten cents? (laughs) You know, everyone has a different answer to that. So, but me, absolutely, I'm willing willing to do it. You know, spend a dollar more, two dollars more to have way less people in the room. And then I, even if it's a four-person dorm, I'm like, I hope it's not booked. <laughs> I hope the whole, all four bunk beds are not booked. 
Um, and of course, what's becoming more and more popular, private rooms in these hostels, right? Trizzy, mm-hmm. you've done that? Yep. I've done that not knowing it was a hostel. <laughs> <laughs> because it was called a... It was called a postal. So I thought it was just a posh hotel, but okay, it turned out to be a hostel because one floor was basically just uh, private rooms and then the mm-hmm. other floors were the hostels or the, the shared dorms and stuff. Okay. Wait, mm-hmm. so what, yeah, what attracted you to even start like looking at it? You know what I mean? um, location and the okay. price and the modern look of the okay. private room that we had. Yeah. Interesting. See, that's a good case in point of like, is this a hostel or not? Like mm-hmm. nowadays, these lines are so blurred, right? Yeah, exactly. Lines are so blurred. And a really good example, if you know, I've stayed here a couple of times, but the freehand hotel mm-hmm. hotel hostel chain, a lot of them are converted hotels, which oh, a lot of okay. dorms, they've tur- a lot of rooms, they've turned into dorms. A lot of them they've kept as hotel rooms. But Freehand, actually, Freehand Miami was the very, very first hostel I've stayed at in the United States. It's still kicking today. They have Broken Shaker, which is famous, and it was awesome. There's a lot of dorms there. I went there for the Justin Timberlake and Jay-Z concert in like 2014, 2013. Yeah, Legends of Summer concert. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But they have a Freehand in downtown Los Angeles, which used to be a huge hotel, and it's absolutely stunning they have an amazing rooftop but the dorms are some of my favorite dorms because they're like so quiet and luxurious everyone has their own bathroom the most people they have in them is four people nice so yeah yeah and you can get like a lot of these hostels have female only dormitories as well which to be honest i've booked a lot more in the past three years just because and maybe i'm generalizing but with women you can like spray perfumes and make it like smell nice (laughs) I feel (laughs) like when I stay in mixed dorms with guys, I'm not going to lie. It always just like smells like a gym locker room. It does. And I'm not, I get it. You can spray cologne, but cologne like hurts my head sometimes. I mean, so does perfume, but like, I don't know. I just feel like it's easier to cover up weird scents Mm -hmm. when I'm in (laughs) a female dormitory. So, you know, that's what I'm booking these days, but Mm -hmm. private rooms. So if you want like the social aspect of a hostel, you can book a private room in a really social or party hostel. You still still get that taste of like being with people, meeting new people, but then retreat to your own space, which is so key. And um, nowadays these hostels, they're fancy now, like I said, they have like curtains on the individual bunks. They have like reading lights, they have charging ports, they have a little table or insert where you can hold things like your phone or your water bottle. Some of them have small lockers or baskets where you can hold personal things like passports, wallets, etc. A lot of them have racks and hooks to hang towels, bathing suits, clothing that need to dry. And this is all within your tiny space that's the size of a twin bed, basically. Wow. Cool. I know. It's but the curtains are so key. I think more hostels are noticing that now too because if you want just like your own little private room or you want to sleep in the middle of the day just close the curtain Mm -hmm. right and sometimes these dorm rooms will have their own bathroom to share between the group in your room which is convenient so like no one from the outside should be going into your room to use the room just go use the bathrooms down the hall the shared bathrooms down the hall um lots of hostels have their own kitchen where you can store food drinks alcohol if those you know, if um, that hostel lets you bring it in and then you can cook on your own too, because a lot of people that stay in hostels want to save money. A lot of what saving money is, is cooking on your own as well. So you can store all your ingredients in the kitchen, in the cupboards. That's cool. You just Mm -hmm. write your name on it. Yep. Don't touch. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have rules like, um, you know, we clean this kitchen out every Friday. So either relabel your stuff or move it or consume it or cook it, whatever. Or if you mm-hmm. leave it in here, we, you know, we'll toss it by Friday. So you're just going to make sure it's properly labeled. Mm-hmm. But they also have common spaces where people can gather. That's the whole point, right? They have living rooms, dining tables, lobbies, outdoor patios where people can make connections and gather in groups and whatnot. I say, I always say, scour the reviews for what kind of hostel it is. Is it a party hostel, which I've spent many 
a day and night in. I used to bartend through party hostels in Peru, mm -hmm. right? It was wild. You <laughs> saw me, you saw me on the bar and the tabletops in my Snapchat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is it a party hostel? Is it a relaxed hostel? Like a quiet one? Like I stayed at one called Nap Park in Bangkok. <laughs> And it was lots of napping and chill, you know, like <laughs> it was, and I was there because I wanted to nap because I had just had crazy three weeks in Thailand. Sidebar, <laughs> I was watching Hangover 2 last night while I was eating dinner and Zach Galifianakis kept calling it Thailand. <laughs> now I can't get that out of my head. So, you know, Thailand has some pretty great. Hostels. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Oh, that's a good one. I know. That it was, it was just one. too good. He's funny. But yeah, scour the reviews for what kind of hostel it is. Everywhere has hostels now. Party, relax, co-working. Selena, huge co-working hostel chain. Global co-working hostel chain. They're known for providing spaces and meeting rooms for people to literally work. And then they have the hostel part of the hostel, right? Mm -hmm. Things that are chill but social um purely quiet hostels airport hostels where people are there to sleep which are basically like pods you know you'll get yeah. you'll get that vibe from reading the reviews people are usually mm -hmm. good about that but when you first started your journey of hosteling around the world mm -hmm. were the hostels did they always have a workspace for you or did it just is is that evolution just oh, sorry is that evolution yeah. just starting now i mean workspace? So let's see. I'm trying to think of when I brought my work to the hostels I've stayed at. I don't think I started bringing my work and computer till 2016. Hmm. I'm trying to think. A lot of them in, in 2016, I was like, as long as there's Wi-Fi and like a table, <laughs> I can work from there, right? But now this evolution of people working from anywhere, being digital nomads, like a lot of work going remote, now hostels are doing it up where they have like quiet spaces where you can work and they have computer stations and they'll have water and coffee and tea available and they'll have phone mm -hmm. booths where you can take calls or they'll have dividers and they'll have spaces with lots of charging ports to charge your devices. Like I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely evolved. Now they're catering towards people who are working from the hostels versus like just having a space like back yeah. in the day. So, um, I mean, I know I mentioned it a lot before, like what the individual beds have, but as far as a hostel building, a hostel entity these days, they're so fancy. I'm, I'm trying to convince people with this episode, I want to convince people to try one, which is why I'm going all in on like what these hostels actually have. I'm telling you, they're so fancy. They're like full on hotels. Hostels nowadays have rooftops, pools, restaurants, nightclubs, outdoor spaces, fitness centers, co-working spaces, cafes, movie theaters. They have their own tour agencies. Like, come on, friends in El Nido, they have their own tour agency. The cool thing about what I love about a lot of hostels too, and I bartended my way through Peru, through Loki and Wild Rover, which still mm -hmm. exist to these days. They're massive hostel operations in Peru. And then Friends in El Nido. These places have their own tour agencies, but they also have separate entrances to like the bar and the concierge. So people from the outside can come in and give them their business too. Okay. Yeah. Which I think is really cool, mm -hmm. you know? And then a lot of times they'll have separate entrance for like, the actual dorm part of it so you can't for safety reasons you can't actually get up to the room part of it yeah if you're if you're sure. not staying there which i think is great for safety a lot of hostels have storage for luggage that's key because people don't you know they're like my flight's in 17 hours but you have to check out so mm -hmm. they'll store your luggage a lot of them have security personnel most people do now these days or key cards to get into the building and especially the individual rooms um places to hang dry your clothing, the front desk. Like I mentioned, whether they have a tour company or not, they'll always ask as a concierge so you can book tours, activities, buses, ferries, right from the front desk that you checked in in the hostels. They literally function like beautiful Marriott's and Hyatt's and Hilton's these days. 
<laughs> nice. So their front desk agent is usually 24 hours as well? Oh, that's a really good question. It depends on okay. the establishment. So you'd have to look and um, kind of scour their views or look at their information because a lot of them mm -hmm. like to mention that they are 24 hours, but they're, I think most of them are moving towards that model, or at least I would like to see them move towards yeah. that model. Uh, well, by the time this episode comes out, I will be, <laughs> I will have been back, but in Taiwan, I'm getting, I'm arriving late in Taiwan and I asked, you know, they only have reception till like 10 PM and I'm arriving past that. And I asked, will I be able to get in? And they said, yep, we'll leave you a key card with security on, you know, X floor and you'll be able to enter the hostel. So a lot of them will okay. still let you like enter, but you just have to kind of make special accommodations and make note. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think for a safety thing too, it's nice having, you know, yeah. a front desk as well to answer any questions, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit and reference a few things on like how to make friends, right? That's why you're Very at a hostel important. usually. Yeah. yeah. You're usually there because maybe you're traveling solo. You want to meet new people. You just want to try something different on your travels. Hostels are designed to meet people. They have activities, family dinners, meals, common spaces. I mean, you're sharing space that you're sleeping in with like three to 11 other people sometimes. But mm -hmm. in, in anything in travel and in life, I think like to move the needle and make actual change in your life and in your travels, you're going to need to do something you've never done before that maybe makes you uncomfortable, which means striking up a conversation with a total stranger who is likely just as nervous as you are. Mm -hmm. And as extrovert, I've told you stories about this, but as extrovert as I am, I sometimes still get nervous trying to make friends in a hostel because it's like... You know, sometimes it can feel a little clicky, but which yeah. is unfortunate. But honestly, you'll always find your people, at least one to two of them. You always will, mm -hmm. right? And I say partake in the activities that the hostel puts on. You know, sign up for them. Try something new. It could be a cooking class. It could be a dance activity. It could be like trivia night, which is always really fun. And the best part is if you don't want to be social, you can just retreat back to your room, close the curtain, go to bed. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had enough of you people. <laughs> exactly. And then hopefully people will be respectful when they come in. That's yeah. that's like the culture of it, you know? And then they're always they're always quiet hours in hostels too, to kind of reinforce those those rules of respect when you're enter entering and exiting the room. Mm -hmm. And we have two excellent episodes on like making friends, traveling solo. Uh, meeting people on the road. Episode 65 is how to travel solo. And episode 69, how to make friends on the road with our friend Akemi from Akemi's Adventures. So episode 65 and episode 69 on Ticket to Anywhere podcast are really good to reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> There's two more topics I wanted to cover <laughs> really yes. quickly. So we got safety is the first one I wanted to cover. Uh, we'll move through this one. My first tip anywhere, hostel, hotel, wherever, is to make friends with front desk or security so that the hostel or hotel will know who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't show up for like 48 hours, <laughs> like, where is this person, you know? Yeah. Um, and like I mentioned, hostel culture is built on community. So, you know, you're there to feel accepted and protected. And these days, comfort and working from anywhere are – big so you know i'd keep that in mind as you're booking and navigating spending a few days at a place but always take extra precautions no matter where you are anywhere and in any situation so i always tell people to follow their gut if you want to yeah. move rooms ask the front desk to move rooms mm -hmm. like they will not say no and if they do it's probably best to get out of that place anyway yeah. i Always bring two to three different size locks so I could lock stuff up, whether it's my bag, a locker, um, you know, locking or attaching something to something else. Some hostels can provide padlocks for you to rent, but uh, sometimes they can charge like three, four, five dollars <laughs> just to rent it like per day. So, per day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. 
or per visit, you know, just depends on the establishment. So I just have, I just travel with some all the time, small yeah. ones, thin ones, thicker ones. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, that's like a $9 lock. That's a better investment. And then it's just a one-time purchase that I just bring. Mm -hmm. So I, I usually bring my um, bike lock with oh, me yeah. everywhere now. <laughs> do you use it everywhere? I do. Yeah. yeah. I've used it a few times. Yeah. And I'm 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 not even staying in hostels. I'm just staying yeah. at hotels. But you just never know because if, yeah. And I try not to do house cleaning every day, but just yeah. in case they need to enter my room for some reason right. while I'm out, I just want things to be safe. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and this is extreme, and I'm not saying this needs to be done, but I have done it. I've only done it maybe twice out of like the 50 plus hostels I've stayed at. Sometimes I'll even put important things, documents, whatever, phone, et cetera, in a waterproof bag or a splash proof bag, like toiletry bag and bring, bring them into the bathroom if needed, like while I'm showering, whatnot. Mm. But that's very rare, but you can yeah. do it if you need to, mm. or if you feel right. you need to. A lot of times, to be honest, it's more of a hassle, but you know, for sure, you never yeah. know. <laughs> That's a good tip, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A way yeah. to look out for yourself. Yeah, for sure. And then last topic before recap are the things that I always bring to a mm. hostel, right? Besides your normal, like, this is what I'm traveling with. The things that I always bring, uh, shower sandals, like literally separate just flip-flops that you can go into a shared hostel shower with. Uh, you know, got to protect your skin, protect your body. So literally mm -hmm. there's flip flops from like Old Navy or the corner store. Five dollars, yeah. right? Um, my own towel just in case. But if you've watched or listened to any of our other gear episodes, you'll hear that I usually bring two towels with me on my travels. I'll bring a Turkish towel and I'll bring my nomadics towel because I like having a beach towel and I like having a shower towel. And sometimes hostels don't provide towels. Some do. It's really 50-50. You just got to read the description to see if mm -hmm. they do. But own towel just in case. Earplugs, of course, for if you have snorers in your room or if you are the snorer. Sometimes <laughs> when I've had a little bit to drink, I am the snorer. So <laughs> you know what I actually do? I think this is very generous of me. I bring, when I know I'm staying in a lot of hostels on my trip, I bring a bag of earplugs and I ask, I tell people in the room, hi everyone, if you want to grab a pair, please feel Aww. free to. Yeah, I do. And I write on the bag for anyone. Nice. So just in case, I mean, I don't have to mention that sometimes I'm the snorer. <laughs> I, it's just me being Oprah and giving out free things. Right. <laughs> you get a headphone. You're, you exactly. Get <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, sarong. If you've listened to our episodes, you know I love a good sarong. Uh, mm -hmm. This is especially important for hostels that don't have curtains. People always put up their sarong or their extra towel as a curtain. So it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Of course, toiletries. Some hostels nowadays provide maybe the basic like shampoo, soap, and conditioner in their showers. But, um, I mean, if you're traveling, you usually bring your own toiletries anyway, but try to have your own. I know if you're used to hotels, they have it for you, but it's, you know, it's a very small amount. So depending on how long you're yeah. staying, you're, you're going to want more anyway. I think and, it's a comfort thing too. Yeah, exactly. And like mm -hmm. I used a medic, I use a medicated shampoo, so I have to bring that everywhere I go. Okay. Right? Hotel shampoo is not going to cut it for me. Mm. So, and then like I mentioned earlier, two to three different sized locks to just lock your stuff up, attach it to other things. So those are the things I always bring. Cool. What would you nice add to word. that? Anything you would add to that? If I were going to a hostel, um, I think those, you pretty much nailed it. Um, do you ever bring your own basket, like toiletry basket yourself, or do you always just use whatever the dorm provides you? Oh, that's a really good ask. Actually, all my toiletry bags that I have are like splash proof. Mm. So they're fine to like hang on a hook while you're showering. But they also have some sort of wristlet or strap that I can hang it on. Nice. Yeah. So I already own these things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A lot of some of them don't have anywhere you can set 
things. So I would, you know, maybe look for something that can hold everything. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Other than yeah. that, I'll just bring like hand sanitizer, sprays, wipes. Yes, definitely. That, yeah. Definitely. A lot of them are really good about cleaning these days too. Like even when I bartended through Loki, I swear mm. there were always, I mean, 300 beds granted at Loki Cusco. Yeah, it was a huge, huge hostel. But there were always cleaners around <laughs> cleaning everything. So. Wow. And okay. this is back in 2016. But I think they yeah. had to because, one, they knew it was a party hostel. And you don't know, you know, party hostels, you get people doing thing, you know, like they mm -hmm. might be <laughs> releasing the night's drinks somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it was just so many people in a party hostel. I think they knew they had to like keep cleaning in check because that is a big – when you're looking at reviews too, I feel like that's one of the first things that people bring up is cleanliness. Because with so yeah. many people, people are concerned how often is it clean, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's a shared space. So. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. 100%. So let's recap really quick. If this is your first time in a hostel – Try it for one or two nights. You can always check out and leave. Be sure to review the hostel's cancellation policy, especially of third-party websites. But Booking Direct is always your best bet for cancellation. Do you want to be social? Well, pick a hostel with family dinners, activities, lots of common space, even digital nomad-type hostels because people are working from everywhere these days. Mm. Do your research. Some of the platforms, like I mentioned earlier, I like to do research and cross-reference on. Booking.com, Hostel World, Google Reviews, Hostel Geeks, TripAdvisor, Hostel Pass, Agoda, particularly for Asia. And then, of course, the video content on TikTok and YouTube. Just know that hostels are different these days. They're really uh, sold as kind of boutique, smaller hotels, shared space hotels. And they have so many amenities that you wouldn't even think a hostel would have even like 10, 15 years ago, right? And try something new at a hostel, whether that's joining in on an activity, taking a new tour, um, introducing yourself to someone because you can always leave if you want to. But I always think it's fun to try it out and say you've experienced it. So mm -hmm. those are my best tips for staying in a hostel for the first time yay that's fun yeah. and i've seen um nowadays there's a lot of themed hostels too yeah. so if you're into <laughs> like a harry potter hostel you could look into that or or an owl or a dog or a cat <laughs> something like a like a cafe but they have yeah no mm -hmm. yeah some of these hostels have their own cafes now <laughs> mm, that's fun cool well thank you leah Maybe Thank I you. will be booking your a, next postal. <laughs> my next postal. Yeah, because I am a couple traveler, so I don't know how my other half feels about hostels. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, y'all, for listening in on another episode of the Ticket to Anywhere podcast, and we'll catch you next time. This is Trizzy at Triz Inc. This is Leah at LA and Flight. To find even more travel tips on budgeting, destinations, and our favorite items, sign up for our monthly newsletter, The Check-In, linked in the show notes or description. This is the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. Thanks for listening.